Hey Warriors, it's Victoria, and I just wanted to come tonight and share with you about mastering the basics of CFS recovery. You know, there are a lot of things that I learned in my journey that helped me gain, regain my health, and I just want to share them because I think in any endeavor that you do, whether you're learning to play golf, or you want to ski, or you want to do art, it's all about mastering the basics. And there are definitely some basic pillars in chronic fatigue syndrome recovery. It at least there were for me. And so through my years, I did four years of the push and crash cycle until I was completely debilitated in bed, uh, bed bound and housebound. And after that time, I began to work with different coaches. And so I packed seven years of coaching into four years by working with different coaches on different modalities of healing. And so a lot of these uh, basics come from those coaches and how I learned how to support my health. And so I just wanted to dive into that with the first one tonight, and that's about sleep. And so, you know, the reason why sleep is so important is because that's where our bodies heal and repair and recover. And if you're not sleeping or getting into that deep sleep, you're not, your body's not going to be able to heal. And the challenge with chronic fatigue syndrome is it's kind of, uh, it's interesting because our bodies, I think our nervous systems are so elevated uh, that they actually keep us from sleeping. So even though we're completely exhausted and fatigued, we're not getting into deep sleep. Even if we're resting all day and all night in bed, our bodies are not recovering. So we really want to get our sleep right. And the first way that I began to do this was by creating a structure and routine. Because I was in bed all day and all night, my body was getting mixed up about what was day and what was night. And so I needed to create a structure by getting up at a certain time in the morning and going to bed at the same time every night and also creating rest times during the day so I knew I could get back into bed. It also helps just to get into another room during the day if you are bed bound so that you're not in the same environment, but so that your body is noticing, okay, during the day I'm out here in the living room and at night I'm in here in the bedroom. So just creating structure and routine is really important. And you can look up, you can Google or look up, you know, sleep hygiene. I'm not going to go into basics of sleep hygiene today, like looking at screens or, or things like that, because that pretty much applies to all of the population. But I think for chronic fatigue syndrome sufferers, there's a whole different uh, toolbox that we need for our sleep. So that's the first one is structure and routine. And the second one is getting our hormones right. And that might seem like a really big nebulous topic, but basically one of the main things you want to check is your cortisol levels. Because what I found was that my cortisol levels were flip-flopped. And this is very common with CFSers, is that during the morning when they're supposed to be going up and high, they're actually crashing. And then at night when they're supposed to be going down so you can sleep, they're actually going up. So uh, you can get that energized and that really... Uh, like adrenalized feeling at e in the evening, and that's because of your cortisol levels. So if you're noticing this happening, you want to go and find a good test for that. You can get them on Amazon. The one that I've used is the ZRT Labs saliva test kit, and you just get the one for the cortisol. You want to get one that tests it four times during the day. And it's an easy test, you'll just send it off. You can do this under your doctor or you can just order it yourself and then look at the results, it's gonna show you. And then the way that I corrected that was a variety of ways that we'll be going into as we go over the basics of recovery, but um, one of them was supplementation. It was an adrenal supplementation that I used. Um, but anyway, that's an important hormone to check is your cortisol levels. Another thing that was really important for me was checking my progesterone and my estrogen. And so I was very bottomed out in both of those. And so I use bioidentical ones. You get these as a prescription from your doctor. Again, you can take another hormone test. You can get these ZRT labs that will give you feedback on where your hormones are progesterone and estrogen work together so this is a uh, called even mist and you want to use this with your progesterone but again these are going to be prescribed by your doctor so check with them find out where you are on your hormone levels because progesterone really helps you sleep and so that was an important thing for me was getting my hormones right I want to mention this book you can see it's well read natural hormone balance it's by a medical doctor and it'll just give you kind of a 101 on women's hormones or if you're a male 
I don't know what to tell you. I don't think this doesn't deal with men. And I'm not sure, obviously, what you need to do on your hormones levels, but you probably want to get those checked as well with your testosterone and everything. So, because that's a lot of energy, right? So you want to get that hormone game going, okay, because that will make a big difference. It is not, in my opinion, a solution, but it is definitely a building block that you need to have in place so that your body can recover. So the next thing that I did to really help my sleep was intentionally create alpha waves during the day. And, you know, our brains have different waves, patterns, and they're called gamma is the really high intensity one when you're focusing on a project and working on solutions. Beta is a very busy, it's usually where we are during the day. And with CFS, unfortunately, we get into beta and it's really hard to get out. It's a very busy, busy, busy thought pattern. And uh, alpha is more relaxed. And then you have theta and delta, which is dreamy and then deep sleep. And so the problem is that when your nervous system is elevated, like it is with chronic fatigue syndrome, you're spending most of your day, at least I was, day and night in that beta mode, and it was really hard to get out. The problem is if you're in beta all day, you can't jump all of a sudden to theta and delta at night. So you really need to intentionally get your brain into alpha waves during the day so when you get to bed at night, you can get into your theta and into your delta. So it's a really important step that most of us, when you're in the throes of chronic fatigue syndrome, you're not even aware of that. So um, the ways that you can do this, I did this in many different ways, is alternate nostril breathing is one of the best ways to start. And I was so fatigued, I didn't even switch nostrils when I was lying in bed doing this. I would do it immediately upon waking up for 10 minutes. You don't have to start with 10 minutes, start with three. And I would listen to beautiful music while I did it. And I would just hold and breathe through one nostril. And what that did, does is it really calms down the system. And I was pretty amazed. Over time, as I developed this practice, locked it in, it wasn't a quick fix, of course, but over time, I began to see amazing results for my sleep. I began to wake up with that cozy, sleepy feeling instead of this exhausted feeling. So that I attribute to the alternate nostril breathing that I did in the mornings. Now, another thing that I would do is I started learning how to meditate. Meditation is difficult for people with chronic fatigue syndrome because of that beta activity going on in the brain. So what you want to do is practice it. Gupta was an excellent place for me to start. He's got really gentle, easy, introductory uh, meditations. I'm sure there are so many others you could try, but it's about developing a practice and just being gentle and easy with yourself as you learn to quiet and still your mind. And then again, that's going to be creating those alpha waves. Now, I did also some guided self-hypnosis, which helped me get into a deep state of relaxation. And that's, again, the alpha waves. And I still do this today. I still make sure that's one of my basics I go down to. If I start getting wiry and like not want to sleep, I realize, okay, I need to make sure I'm getting my alpha during the day. Um, the other day I was doing laps. It's something I always enjoy doing after laps is I just lie back and float on the water. I look up at the deep blue sky and the clouds and I just float. And it's just this feeling of bliss for me, feeling held by the water. And it's just, it's total alpha waves. So make sure you're getting your daily dose of alpha. Oh, another thing that you can do to create alpha waves is, and I used to do this, was little adult coloring books. Just when you're in bed, you know, when you're resting and you're recovering, you just can color and draw. Do whatever is within reach for you at wherever you are in recovery right now. The next thing is I did use, and I still do actually, sleep support. And I like to use non-addictive natural things for sleep. And so early on, I was using this. It's called Sleep Through by Gaia. I think they are an excellent company. Um, you know, natural herbs, it's non-addictive. So you can do that. Another thing that I use is this uh, Mary's Sleep Pen. And it's actually CBN, so it's it's 
one of those terpenes or whatever you call them, cannabinoids in cannabis, but it does not get you high. It doesn't have THC in it. And so it's a CBN pen and it's really good for sleep. I mean, I just do a slight little dot on my wrist and it's very helpful to get to sleep. Another thing I used to use that is melatonin, and that's also uh, a good way, a good natural way to get sleep. Um, the nice things is these are not addictive, so you just use them when you need them. The last thing I would say about my sleep was brain retraining has really been helpful for me. Using brain retraining for, during the day to get into deep relaxation. And also at night, when I go to bed, when I go get start getting ready for bed, I make it a habit to park anything that's bothering me during the day or any stressful thoughts come up or anything I saw, saw in the news. It's like, no, you're not allowed during this time of bed preparation and going to bed. So I just like to park any thoughts like that and know that in the morning I can get to them. And obviously you can do this in a variety of ways. You can write down anything that's bothering you on a sheet of paper and just put it aside. I actually leave a little list uh, notepad on my desk in my bedroom. So during the night, if I think of something or before I go to bed, if I think of something, I can just jot it down on that. Oh, I need to do this tomorrow. I just write it down so that it's not in my brain. I'm not trying to remember it. So anyway, Warriors, I hope that helps. I hope it helps you start getting some good deep sleep. That's going to be a real basic in recovery to master. It's not something that will happen overnight, but I can tell you that you can improve and you can begin to sleep deeply at night so that your body can rest and heal. So take care, warriors. Remember, life's not over. It's starting again. And I speak life, health, and wholeness over you.